Videocards.com has just leaked some very interesting slides which appear to be the kind of slides that would come with an RTX 4070 review guide from NVIDIA for reviewers. Again, at this point, it's very widely rumored that the launch date for these will be April 13th and that reviews would go out on April 12th and that the price would be 599 MSRP. Now we've got a whole bunch of data here to look at. Uh, we also have a look that it does appear to be a Founders Edition available. And uh, there it is. Again, this leaked by videocards.com. So what we're gonna do in this video is go through all of this data, which appears to be, uh, again, you can't confirm this. This is leaked information. It looks like the type of slides um, that NVIDIA would release in videocards.com seems very confident that these are actual leaked slides from reviewers to them. Anyway, so what are we looking at here? Well, if you look at this, we see, okay, first of all, it's confirming the $599 price point, and they're showing it off versus a 3070, 3070 Ti, and 3080. So how do we interpret this graph? Well, videocards.com seems to be intentionally garbling the quality of the slides, so some of the smaller writing is difficult to read. Uh, but it appears to see that this is average performance of, I think that says 18 games, something about like that. Uh, configuration looks like an i9-12900K at 1440p. Now this is very important. It says that DLSS and RT are on in games that support it. And then we have these green bars and these um, uh, uh, gray bars. So what are these meaning? Well, the key up here is saying that the green bars are using frame generation, DLSS3 frame generation, and the gray bars are without frame generation. Now that's extremely relevant because um, for one thing, the 40 series can use frame generation, the 30 series cannot, so it's impossible to do an apples to apples comparison in that way other than, so the only apples to apples comparison we can get here is without frame generation. Although it is important to note that it does appear that uh, even these gray bars are using DLSS, but it would be the DLSS that both, uh, both generations can actually use. Uh, so the gray bars would get you the best relative performance numbers. And then the green bars are advertising a feature the 4070 has that the 3000 series doesn't uh, with frame generation. Now I have more full videos on this topic, but frame generation uh, can greatly increase frame rate up to almost two times, especially when you're CPU limited, but frequently actually a lot less than that uh, by basically uh, interpolating frames. So, so it doesn't generate have the game engine generate a new frame it has um, an algorithm take an actual frame and the game processes most of the next frame and then inserts a, what a lot of people are calling fake frame in between. It's really an interpolated frame. Uh, so you get uh, more visual data in between the real frames, making motion appear smoother. But especially at lower frame rates, there can be errors in those frames, which can slightly degrade image quality. It's on, on a game to game basis, uh, how good it is. Um, and then also it does not improve the game's responsiveness because they're not real game engine frames, um, but it does increase the motion smoothness of the game. Overall, I'm actually very positive on it. I like it, but don't, I, I don't like it being marketed as just directly increasing frame rate because normal frames and even DLSS2 frames increase the game's responsiveness because the game is actually generating those frames. Well, as generated frames don't increase the game's responsiveness and they slightly decrease the game's responsiveness uh, due to um, adding in, uh, slightly delaying the next real frame in order to give you that interpolated generated frame. Anyway, I have fuller videos on the topic. We don't need to get too bogged down on that topic right here. I just wanna make sure everybody understands what they're looking at uh, on this slide. So the green is showing off that frame generation feature. Now, uh, crucially, we're seeing that if we're looking at the direct comparison of the gray frames with both cards using DLSS2, they're claiming that it matches the RTX 3080, which had a $699 MSRP. So basically, it it's, looks like it's a 3080 class performance for $100 less. Uh, it's coming in at the same price as the RTX 3070 Ti, and they are claiming it is about 20% faster than that uh, when using DLSS2. And then versus its namesake direct competitor, although not pricing direct competitor, of the RTX 3070, which was $500, this is now a 30% performance gain. And so we can dig into this. There's also this slide with just a whole bunch more information. But first, let's just look at these numbers 
And uh, l let's do a couple of calculations. So, so first of all, I was playing around with this a little bit before I was filming. If you divide the price of the 4070 by the price of the 3070, this is a 20% or 1.2 times the price uh, of the RTX 3070. Now, if we look back at this slide, um, we're claiming that the DLSS2 performance at least, which is at least directly comparable, is 1.3 times the performance. Now, some it's possible that we get, um, a lot of that we'd see slightly different results if we weren't using DLSS versus using DLSS. NVIDIA seems to be doubling down on the, or at least in these slides that got leaked by videocards.com on only showing DLSS performance. But at least in these, we're seeing a 1.3 times performance uplift using ray tracing and DLSS. That's the other thing, this is also using ray tracing. Um, and we have seen a, a lot of the 40 series cards do have some tweaked ray tracing optimizations that the 30 series can't take advantage of. So it is possible that in rasterized performance uh, it, and, or, or, and maybe not using DLSS, not using ray tracing, that kind of thing, that maybe 1.3 times the performance would be a, a bit optimistic. So it looks like we are at best, at best, seeing 30% more performance for 20% more money. Now, is that fair? There's been a massive amount of inflation. I am not an economist, believe it or not, but I did manage to Google search a uh, inflation calculator and the RTX 3070 came out in 2020 uh, for $500. And according to this inflation calculator, that $500 with the record bad uh, inflation uh, would now cost 577.68. In other words, adjusted for inflation, this is not as bad of a price increase as um, as it appears when directly comparing their MSRPs. Now, but the problem with inflation though is it affects different markets differently. So another way of looking at this is if I just went to buy an RTX 3070 new right now, what would it cost? And if I type, or I'll show you, I'm doing this live, RTX 3070 into PC Part Picker, which surveys a variety of major retailers, Amazon, Newegg, uh, a whole bunch more, that kind of thing. Sort prices low to high. It looks like the cheapest new model in stock right now is $530. So RTX 3070s, despite being over two years old at this point, are still selling above their MSRP of $500. Um, so we can look at this a few different ways. Compared to MSRP, this looks really, really not that exciting. Um, if you compare it to the actual market right now, which I think, you know, maybe is the fairest comparison, it looks like it, in other words, if, if you look at buying a 3070 today versus buying a 4070 at MSRP in a couple of days, if those end up actually coming out and being available, um, you're getting you're paying about 13% more than what a 3070 actually costs on the market today, if I'm looking at the cheapest models. Um, assuming we actually hit the $600 MSRP, which is a big question. Uh, anyway, so it looks like it's about 13% more money uh, and you're getting about 30% more performance, at least when using DLSS2 and ray tracing, question mark on, on what that'll be without that. But then you get the extra features. Here's where a lot of the other stuff comes in. So you will get frame generation where the 3070 didn't have it. Um, also price to performance versus like a 3070 Ti, the 3070 Ti is just much worse value than a 3070. So compared to its direct pricing competitor of the 3070 Ti, it is um, uh, a, a better uh, gen generational increase than, than um, it looks versus the 3070. Um, and then versus the 3080, if it is matching the 3080's performance, at least roughly with RT and DLSS enabled, that's the best we can tell from here, and coming in at $100 less uh, for basically the same performance, but with more features like frame generation and all that, um, that is definitely something to think about. Because uh, videocards.com, I've already talked about this, but they leaked a different slide that appeared to be a reviewer type slide. Um, uh, that I've already talked about in an earlier video, but this confirms some things uh, about its um, power consumption, things like that. Ah, let me fly out of the way here. So in this slide, we saw that its average gaming power does seem to be lower than even a 3070 and much lower than a 3070 Ti. And again, even a greater degree lower than the 3080, whose performance it seems like uh, it may be matching at least with DLSS and RT enabled. Um, so that gives it uh, a significant power draw advantage, um, along with the fact that, again, it does have the frame generation support. It has, uh, this is hard to see under the videocards.com logo they've put over this, but it does have the AV1 encoding, 
Uh, so for productivity, streaming, things like that. And then a big one here is that it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM versus eight gigabytes of VRAM on the 3070 and 3070 Ti. And uh, the 3080 had 10 gigabytes of VRAM on the, the main model, although there was a 12 gigabyte model of the 3080 released. Um, because it was not specified otherwise, I would assume that this slide is comparing to the 3080 10 gigabyte, and they would have specified the 12 gigabyte if that's what com uh, the comparison was that they were making. Now, are we actually gonna see any of these 4070s for $599? Well, again, this is where this other leak comes out. Again, videocards.com crushing it with the leaks here. Uh, basically showing uh, photos of an RTX 4070 Founders Edition. The overall design I'm not going to talk too much about because, hey, it looks like a 40 series uh, NVIDIA GPU Founders Edition. Uh, it is showing off the 12 VHP power uh, uh, connector of, of, of various degrees of infamy. Um, but the fact that there is a Founders Edition model does mean that at least the Founders Edition models should actually cost the $599 MSRP. Um, whether or not the partner models cost anywhere near that or you know how many of the, the Founders Edition cards are available is a big question mark. Um, Videocards.com also leaking a huge number of the, uh, of the partner cards. So it looks like they have several models here from Gigabyte. It says they're working on, uh, Gigabyte is working on four cards, such as the gaming, WinForce, Aero, and Eagle GPUs, only WinForce and, and Eagle RTX 4070 will ship with the eight pin power connector. So some of them shipping with the normal eight pin. Well, it looks like the higher end versions are coming with the, uh, the 16 pin connector, which is that, that 12 VHP. Um, PCIe 5 gen connector. Uh, so this, these look like the, uh, the Gigabyte cards here, if you wanted to take a quick look at those. So it says, importantly, Gigabyte does not believe the RTX 4070 is worthy of a dual fan design. So all four designs will get three fan designs, which is a little bit annoying. I think one exciting thing about this, and if you look at the, uh, this, like the, the Founders Edition is definitely a, a two fan model. And if we look at these power draw targets at 186 aver aver average gaming watts and a TGP of 200 watts, I don't think you need a massive beefy cooler. So people looking for a smaller card for a smaller form factor build, uh, here was the Gigabyte Eagle there, also three fans. Um, but it looks like they're showing off that uh, MSI has the uh, Ventus uh, 3X and Trio models, but they also have a Ventus 2X and Supreme, uh, Supreme cards coming. It says that they do have a picture of at least the Ventus 2X. So it looks like there's at least a two fan model uh, coming from MSI. And then it looks like uh, they have a couple of other cooler models uh, available here. These look like palette cards. Um, uh, let's see, that one's Zotac, that one's palette. And again, these look like two fan models. So it looks like we'll actually get some two fan models available. So again, the fact these are available um, with lower power draw and things like that is definitely at least something to consider. Um, so the last thing we have is this slide. So this seems to be where I think some of that, some of these uh, performance numbers we saw, um, sorry, in, in this other slide, I think are actually coming from, because they're mentioning this is coming from, I think that's either 16 or 18 games. Well, here's a bunch of games, maybe it's these games, because this one also says this is done on an i9-12900K at 1440p max settings with DLSS and RT in games that support it. Now, I'm not aware of every single one of these games. Uh, there's some of these that I don't test myself, but uh, some of these I don't think have ray tracing like Microsoft Flight Sim Simulator. Uh, some of these, I like I haven't tested Jurassic World. I have no idea what's going on with that one. Um, but many of these games I have tested and it seems like the vast majority of these do have uh, ray tracing and DLSS support, although I don't think every single one of them does. Um, now, there, notice how this is laid out. First of all, what comparison points are we looking at? Um, so the green bar here is RTX 4070. Um, the uh, light orange is RTX 3070 Ti. And the darker, uh, did I say orange? I think I, I meant gray. Did I say orange? I feel like I said orange. Anyway, the light gray is RTX 3070 Ti. The dark gray is RTX 2070 Super. So they're showing like if you're upgrading, you know, a lot of people skip a gen and then upgrade, right? So, and, and notice they're comparing against the 3070 Ti, which from a price to performance standpoint uh, makes the 4070 look a lot better than if you compare it against the, uh, the 3070 non-Ti. But anyway, um, so what are we looking at this? There's a lot going on here. So first of all, I am 
uh, there's the games with frame generation, and if frame generation is enabled, uh, uh, sorry, is available, they're definitely using it, right? And then there's this bracket here, which is games that do not support frame generation. But keep in mind, if the games support ray tracing or and or DLSS, both of those are enabled. Now it doesn't say what level of DLSS either. If it's DLSS performance or quality, I would assume they're just uh, kicking it uh, all the way to the performance setting, um, but. Uh, it, it doesn't say specifically. Now they're saying that they're, this is what they're targeting with the 4070. They're saying the RTX 4070 is targeting 1440p ray traced gaming at 100 plus FPS, but relying on DLSS and DLSS frame generation when, en when enabled in order to get there. Um, it's looking like they're saying that, that with that available, the RTX 4070 is usually able to deliver on that. Although uh, Witcher 3 RT Ultra uh, looks like it's not hitting their 100 FPS mark that they were wanting, and neither is Watch Dogs Legion or Metro Exodus. Which are three frame uh, actually does feature frame generation. It's still not hitting that 100 FPS target. Um, so interesting stuff there. Now, so, so anyway, so we're seeing these comparison graphs on this one, and again, these are comparison versus the 3070 Ti and 2070 Super. Obviously, with frame generation enabled, you will be reaching the higher frame rates and go into all those caveats that I explained at the beginning of the video um, about frame generation. Again, I, I don't want to give the impression that I don't like frame generation, though. I think most people would actually prefer to play with it on in single-player graphically heavy games, as long as your base frame rate is high enough. Um, but some people wouldn't. Some people definitely wouldn't uh, prefer to play with it on. And if you're more into competitive gaming, it's not really going to be helpful for you. It would be harmful. Uh, due to the slight, uh, slight extra latency. Now, uh, the f games without frame generation here would be more of the direct uh, p uh, power uh, comparison, I guess we would, we would go with. Um, and so you can see how it stacks up against the 3070 Ti there. All right, so this is what we have. So assuming these slides are legitimate from NVIDIA, then they're probably painting, you know, this is how NVIDIA wants you to see the RTX 4070. Uh, they want you to see it with frame generation enabled. They want you to at least see it using ray tracing and DLSS and show that if you have all of those features enabled, you can get high refresh rate 1440p gaming. And especially if you're going to use frame generation, it's offering a significantly uh, higher output frame rate than you're getting um, from the previous generations. That's what they want. Uh, they they want you to, to how you, they want you to see it. Now. In the actual market, an RTX 3070 still costs $530, and a 3070 Ti brand new still costs over $600. So um, it does look like it is going to offer better price to performance, even without frame generation, than what you could currently buy a 3070 or a 3070 Ti for, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a very large increase to perform price to performance. Um, especially if, if you compare to the um, uh, original MSRP of the 3070. Um, it has better power, uh, better power efficiency, it has better features like frame generation, it has um, AV1 encoding, it looks like because it's power efficient, uh, it will be available in some smaller um, sizes compared to some other GPUs. There's a lot going for it here, but I think a lot of people might be disappointed by the fact that if you just straight up MSRP compare it to the 3070, which is its namesake predecessor, it looks like it's going to be 20% more expensive um, and offering, in a, a best case scenario without frame generation, maybe 30% more performance. So 20% money for 30% more performance, not that exciting. Is that fair because of inflation and current pricing? I don't know, but I think a lot of people are going to uh, feel that way. What do you guys think in the comment section? I've given you all the, all the information we have available here. Um, if, uh, if Nvidia's claims end up being true, that this is the performance that you're getting, um, and let's say you could actually maybe get, get one for the MSRP, what do you think? Is this your stop? Is this your GPU upgrade? Or is this, uh, is this not good enough? Um, is this good enough, but you're not excited, you wish it was better. Where are we at with this? Let me know in the comment section. I hope all of you have an excellent day.